All right, today we're gonna to be interviewing Mike Ward, one of my favorite human beings on the planet. One of the most skilled attorneys that you're ever gonna come across, ever. Now, he spent a lot of time defending insurance companies, and now he spends all his time uh, with Hogel Injury Law, helping people make good claims with insurance companies and, and, and writing a different story. He's a completely opposite now. Um, we get into a great discussion about clients. We get into a great discussion about what makes a good case a good case. We get into a great discussion about KFC and the similarities between them and insurance companies. Let's get into it. Hey, let's start casting. Uh, we're here with Mike Ward, and he has been an attorney for a little under 30 years. So that's it's a minute. That's a that's a skinny second. It's a stretch. Um, all of your all of your let's just say your career has been unique. Um, but you swap from one end of the spectrum to focusing on injury law and folks that are injured in accidents and things of that nature. And you came from kind of a dirty pool and I'm going to go with this. I mean, you came from a dirty pool. I mean, let's just call a spade a spade. You, you represented a defense insurance defense. The dark, the dark side, the dark side, you come from a dirty pool, but let's also talk about other pools or areas that are dirty too. So I'm going to go with my story. Okay of kind of seeing this firsthand and why you've always piqued my interest from like years and years ago. We've been working together forever. So you had this skill set that frankly, a lot of other um, personal injury attorneys, the guys on the billboards with the jingles and the and the funny little sayings and the flavor savers sometimes or the but you know you you have the skill set that they just don't have ever in house they don't have it you can write you can research you can bring opposing counsels to their knees because you've practiced in this dirty so let's talk about this so when i start i don't have i don't have a paycheck I have five attorneys and I'm sitting at the front of uh, I'm at the only free desk available is the reception desk. And so I'm sitting at the front and these five fellas practice all sorts of different types of law. One of them I consider Atticus Finch. You're the closest I've ever met to him. Okay, now I hold him in very high regard. Kent was a good man, good mentor as well, and he shredded the crap out of anything I ever wrote. So I became a little bit above average because of that. His son is an amazing attorney too, but he made this comment, so here's where the question comes in. He makes this comment to me back then when I, the majority of my clientele were leftover personal injury cases that no one wanted to, to touch. Yeah. And so, okay. He says to me one day, well, I feel like I'm working hard. Um, and I was. He says, well, when you're done practicing pretend law and selling used cars and insurance, you can come and be a real lawyer someday. I want your take on that. Why is he telling me that? I have no idea. <laughs> the truth. <laughs> um, you know, just... Hearing that about your background, though, I mean, first of all, just with regard to being able to have a mentor, it's it's just tremendous. And that mentor really makes a mark that is indelible on the rest of your future. And I, and I had that. That was Steve Smith for me. And Steve was a uh, very aggressive, very good uh, trial lawyer and uh, taught me a ton of things. Um, uh, he told me when I went to take my first deposition that he wanted me to object to every single question and that he was going to read the transcript afterwards and that if uh, I didn't object to everyone, I might not have a job. It was, it was a brutal deposition. And, and, but uh, anyway, I don't know that that is, in fact, that is definitely not the way that I would advise anyone to practice, but uh, it, was, it was the way I was trained. 
Um, but I don't know. Um, why, selling used cars, I mean, obviously he's telling you that he, there's another level that you need to step your game up to and that you're capable of it. It changed one day. So I'm, again, at the front desk. And so these five gentlemen were waiting on me. Uh, we were all going to lunch. And I'm kind of the little puppy that they're all bringing along at the time. And a call comes in, totally impromptu. I put it on speaker. One of the, I didn't know what to expect, but it was an adjuster on a case that I'd been handling. And I've got two guys racing motorcycles, one on a Harley, one on a crotch rocket. And they're going about 100 and some change on a one of those um, uh, residential roads that curve around. And my client, and we're going to go Karen, because that was her name. Karen was on her way to nursing school. And Karen heard these la this loud, you know, ruckus, but didn't see anything. And she's there at the stop sign trying to pull into that same curved, you know, road. And so she's just creeping out little at a time, little at a time, because she's hearing this. Well, before you can say Bob's your uncle, this is all happening in no time flat, right? Before you can say Bob's your uncle, they appear, she stops. Um, she's kind of in their path, and they're, which they're approaching rapidly. Right. One motorcycle hits the other one. They both go topsy-turvy. One guy starts sliding into home plate, and I mean sliding, literally, head first sliding, hits the, hits the gutter, shoots up into the window, and nails Karen in her head like a missile. I know, you can't make this stuff up. Like, she gets air evac'd out. She gets a shunt put in her neck. I mean, it was a pretty... He dies in her lap. Oh. All right, so this is not a good day for anyone. No. And I take this call in front of all these guys. Like, I have an audience. And the adjuster uh, for one of the wonderful... Um, firms that you attack on the daily um, says, well, we're going to assign 30% at fault to your client. Um, it's a $100,000, $300,000 policy. So $100,000 was the most she could get under the policy of the motorcyclist, which is a fairly big policy for a cyclist um, back then. It was many, many, many moons ago. Um, but it's a pretty fat policy. Uh, for one of the policies. So she has the gall, in my opinion, to, to say we're going to assign 30% at fault to your client. A little bit of a so what, though? So that's exactly what I said. I said, all right, write the check. I didn't engage. I just heard her. She told her why and all the reasons. I mean, she went on and on and on. I just, okay, write the check. She stopped cold and wrote the check and sent it. Yeah. I avoided, and I had five jaws dropped right in front of me. Like, okay, we wouldn't have done that that way. Okay, we would have gone to war. Those are fighting words, so on and so forth. That's what most attorneys feel like they need to do is fight. But to me, it was... Exactly. You saw it right away. He's like, well, why even fight about it? You're going to get every cent and much faster without fighting. Right. And so, um, but you were one of these guys. You wrote and you defended banks. You've defended entities. You've, you've done civil litigation. You've done... And so I think intolerable cruelty on steroids sometimes, it's like... You're sitting there looking at the watch, making sure that you bill folks for your time. You're cranking this litigation or legal, you know, matters out your office day in, day out. And now you know things kind of work a little bit differently with Hogle injury law. You, you're you're working in a different time, like time continuum has changed there. Mm -hmm. So like, tell me a little bit about those days where you're objecting to every question in the depot 
and the days of today what 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 makes that a kind of a difference uh, for you personally you know as defense counsel um first of all everything is just way more buttoned up it's about getting the hours for sure uh but it's about doing everything at a very high level you're you're getting paid to represent essentially insurance companies you're representing individuals who were involved in, in accidents or, or problems, but uh, in effect, you're representing the insurance companies. They're the ones that hire us and assign us to the case and, and the ones that we're trying to please and show our excellence and expertise to. So you're doing that. Uh, you're keeping your firm happy by billing, you know, 2,200, 2,500 hours a year. Um, and so there's a lot of work and a, at a very high level of expertise. Um, and as you're doing that, you're patting yourself on the back for having reached your, your hourlies, for having won cases. And the morality of it, for me, I think, would be a little bit twisted at times. Just kind of, hey, I'm doing a great job for my employer. I'm doing a great job for the insurance company. Really not putting any thought into what's happening with the cases other than the fact that I'm winning them. Um, and when you go and do that, uh, you, you win and, you know, you work hard and you have good results and you feel good about it. You earn a nice paycheck and feed your family. And, uh, then one day you have a case where you just go, this was an horrific result for this poor plaintiff um, and maybe as a result of my efforts the plaintiff was prevented from introducing certain evidence or was in, was unable to discover this fact that would have been able to help uh, their client who was you know injured catastrophically and and now they're going to be left empty-handed as a result of that and and it starts to for me anyway it gnawed at me at times and thought oh, this is this is a lousy place to be on this one and and uh, um, when you switch over and, and it wasn't an immediate switch. I started representing plaintiffs, a uh, mix of plaintiffs and defendants. Uh, and now with the whole firm, it's all plaintiff's work. And it is so great to uh, dive in, to meet with clients, to understand their problems and uh, listen to their accounts of what has happened and the, the the terrible accident, the the pain and suffering that they're continuing to endure. And to learn that and then to be able to use the same expertise that I learned to apply to a case as defense counsel to utilize that and to be able to do it to allow the plaintiff to talk about their injuries and to do so in a manner that will allow them to achieve the result that they deserve to, right. to really seek and be able to get justice for them is tremendous yeah to, to see that that so you get to see that change that that they that feel good moment where they feel like they were treated good yeah and they didn't expect to in this system that we have and they feel like they were treated good that's it and so some of those, so you've been on the dark side. Yeah, the, the my, camera totally my, blurs my, all my that hand, stuff. My out. hands are like so sweaty. The table is like wet. Man, can you keep doing that? Because it really <laughs> looks good or on your side. I can Just write kinda, your name. Yeah, why not? <laughs> why not? So, some of those tactics that you would employ as defense, we call them horrors. I'm. But, but, you know, I think that's a good word for No, that's them. okay because uh, we always used to make fun of personal injury oh, players sure. as ambulance chasers and, you know, my daughter-in-law, 
I, I swear she still knows the jingle of Lerner Row by heart, and I want to strangle her. And she knows I want to strangle her. Right, every time and she so sings she it. starts singing it. It, it. And it's like two fuddy-duddies, and it's like, what in the Sam? Whatever. <laughs> it's like, what gets these people through the door? They don't have anyone else to call. They don't, they don't, uh, they don't realize that there is a significant difference between, hey, this firm, uh, Hogel Injury Law, that you're, that you're, uh, you know, you and your band of, of, of very, very well trained individuals, um, shoot to kill. Um, there's a difference. You guys know their name. You guys know their plight. You guys know their. I mean, that is what you know. I mean, and so then, what I think is unique. What I think. I'm putting this together, but correct me if I'm wrong. You use that expertise of yes, the, the days of yore to go, all right, defense counsel, um, I'm in super good hands with Allstate and I'm really rocking and rolling with State Farm and I've got good neighbors all over me and you know dang well that they're in the business of being in front of you expert-wise. Every step of the way, they're in. They've got an expert here. They've got an expert here. Why? Because State Farm's going to have sixty-four thousand claims in the Valley area. I'm just making that number up, but a, a lot of claims in the Valley area. And what uh, what medical professional doesn't want to represent or get a ton of their work? Well, they all do. It's all about the money. And so you're fighting this big, huge mechanism. You're fighting state, City Hall, right, every day. So you know the way this game has worked and played, but you also have an advantage is that you hear the information first. So was it just the other day, I think, is like you came up with, let's hire the, let's hire the uh, expert that all the insurance companies hire because we know what's going on with this particular case, and then we know that it's going to go next level into litigation. And so what was your thinking behind that? Because I thought it was awesome that you went and hired their usual. You know, one of the things that happens on this, to address your other point first, um, the insurance companies, they will sometimes spend fifty or sixty or 70000 to defend a case where the demand is thirty. Right. And the reason that they do that is that they hope that it will have an impact on not necessarily the plaintiff, but on the lawyers to say, hey, learn your lesson and don't don't mess with us. Just understand that this is what you're going to get. And they hope that it will have a cumulative effect that they'll be able to, in the long run, uh, build this image that, hey, you're just not going to get money from us. So learn your lesson and take whatever pittance we're willing to give. All right, let's pause it right there. I got a question now. Okay. This one might be good. I'm not sure. It's going to come out good. <laughs> okay. Okay, right. take this porridge, Oliver Twist. All right. Take and, it. and like it. And like it. Okay. And like it. Okay. Does that work, in your opinion, from what you've seen um, on the firms that that are large and and and, and they're all over the radios and the, and the TVs and the billboards and the buses does that seem to work for them Could, do you see those guys in court with you it works it works it works across the board i think hmm. um and it works against them in particular because a good number of them simply uh won't take a case to litigation ever. Right. Um, I could name a few. I know who some they, of them they don't go to. They don't go they, to trial. We they, all know that. They, well, they not only go. Not, not go to trial, they won't even file suit for right. you. So, so why would an insurance company, if they know that the law firm is never going to even file, really make a good offer? Because, hey, we don't need to get serious because the case isn't going to be filed, at least by not by this attorney. Right. So, so they're making their money, yeah. their, 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 their exorbitant amount of money, apparently because they're advertising all over the place, mm -hmm. and that's not free. So they're making this money, but they're making it on numbers. So they're just getting... That's it. Yeah, yeah. it's a numbers game. Numbers game, and again, the insurance defense companies, or 
insurance companies know that they're not going to advance the ball very far. Hmm. They're not going to move those chains. Yeah. So, so that's part of it. And they know that you will. Like, they know that you will. Like, the adjusters treat you differently. Well, they know that the Hogle firm and I are going to take the case to litigation and a trial. Yeah, Hogle to. injury is, gonna, yeah. is going to lay it down if We're, laying it down is needing to be happening. Yeah. And, and not that anybody should ever be eager to go to trial. Right. I right. mean, putting your fate in the hands of a jury is um, filled with risk. And so settlement is good as long as the settlement is a it's reasonable one. Reasonable one, yeah. So, uh, but they absolutely sometimes are not reasonable and they will not be reasonable until they know that you're serious and, and that it's going to take some time and that they have that same risk of a jury tapping them for significantly more than what they're willing to pay. See, and that's where the dark pool, so that's where you're your yesterdays kind of come in pretty handy is you know how they play their game. You know how they roll. You know you're objecting to every question because, or whatever because your mentor, and I'm sure he was fantastic because the writing is beyond and the research is beyond. The lawyership, yeah. the man did his job making sure you were good and panicked to not make a mistake in the practice of law. <laughs> yeah, it was... I, or the Mr. Smith, I forget his first name. Steve. Yeah. Yeah. So he made sure that you were bleeding at, at every every turn. He certainly did. Uh, <laughs> well, too many stories. I won't go into them. But uh, it, it's not the way. That is not the way that I practice. Uh, there is a much more civil. There's no reason really to to be uncivil about it. You can disagree without being disagreeable, and I firmly believe in that. Um, mm. And um, I, I've never since then objected to every question right. because most of the questions are reasonable. But your clients benefit from that that mentality. I mean, your clients, I mean, from the reviews that we get, I mean, your clients really enjoy that they feel there's a control factor and they're part of it. You know, one of the things that I feel is lost because by, by these other firms, um, that are just a mill to get people in. They are tremendous at advertising. Uh, their ability to actually advocate for a client, I don't really know. I, I, I wouldn't hire them and I steer people away from them. Well, but we get set, we get leftovers all the bloom and time from these people. We do, and I wouldn't say it's leftovers. It's just people that left them and come to their to us, senses right. and said, "Hey, there's got to be better than this." But one of the things that concerned me when I was defending a case, and and you wouldn't be able to ascertain it until you took the plaintiff's deposition, was how sympathetic they are hmm. and as plaintiff's counsel if you're one of those firms that's just a mill okay hey, get the information my understanding is a lot of the time attorneys don't even talk to the client so you cannot even gauge okay how sympathetic is my client how great is my client um, you don't know because oh, the paralegals are just doing the intake and, and I don't have any sense of this right. I have no feel for it but I want to talk to that client. I want to hear their story from their own mouths. And, and I'm already thinking, how is this going to sound in deposition? How is this going to sound at trial? And I'm smiling because I, I've already, I already know what the greatest strength of my case is. Right. It's this awesome person, this genuinely injured person that I'm speaking with that is going to, I mean, it moves me hearing them talk about it. And I'm just going like, this person yeah. deserves to be compensated. And the adjuster for the other side, the lawyer for the other side, they won't hear that. And they may never hear it if the case resolves. Right. But it's my job to be able to convey that as quickly as possible. And again, I think it's completely lost by many personal injury firms today. 
um, because they just simply don't take the time to get to know the client. It's just, oh, it's a file. It's a file. Okay, let's get the medicals, get the records out there, get it over. All right, this is, and it's all done purely on the medical records and bills, and it's just like, oh, there it is. So it's the intangibles with those things that just make something pop. Yeah, and, well, and, and and get it to reasonable. Get it to okay. That's your best shot, I guess. Is what I'm kind of reading between the lines. That's your best shot at avoiding trial if you can. Is is actually getting to that part as fast as possible. Now, sometimes insurance companies can be obstinate and a little bit hard headed and otherwise stupid. That is probably the case. We're gonna say that with the greatest of respect of none and, it, and every, to be fair every now and then we have clients that are obstinate Arr. and and it's just kind of like what uh you know what every now and then every now every and now and then, every now and then. I mean, one of my favorite you know i is it okay to talk about well as know. long as we don't bring up names okay. my my favorite one is this guy just he's just really not doing very well in his deposition and he's arguing with the other side and and i'm i am making objections just to and, and taking breaks to try to rein him in a little bit but he's just going man this guy this guy's playing checkers and i'm playing chess and i'm just going we are getting killed we are getting killed you and, keep messing up with my bishops <laughs> i need them i need the pawns <laughs> So on, on those cases, yeah, it'd be great to just let it go and be done on the papers. Right. And, and, you know, yeah. You, but most of the time, the, the, when you have someone who is just even a little bit likable and they talk about their injury, they talk about how it's impacted their life, there is a huge degree of sympathy that needs to be conveyed to defense counsel and to the insurance company so that you can get the amount that you deserve. And trying to find the best way to do that as quickly as possible is, is something that we really strive to do here. Yeah. So you basically take the real story, the truth of it all, you boil it down and then you work it. You're praying like a Dutch uncle that your that your client gets better, feels better physically. I mean, nobody wants to see somebody drinking through a straw, so you're hoping that there's a good recovery uh, as far as medically. And then at that point, you're able. To, you know the person. You know that these bills, these 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 medical necessities. Um, were, necess were, were, were necessitated, that's a big word. I don't like that word. How about necessary? That, that's, that's a, probably a better word. Let's go with necessary, you okay. know. Let's go with that one. Okay. Yeah, just, yeah, let's agree to disagree on the better way to put it, okay? All right. Okay. But, uh, are we going to call that agreeance? Okay, well, we can call it an agreement. <laughs> okay. That's better too. Yeah. All right. We can make up words. We can. It's We're right. allowed. It's, is this is a podcast. I th we can make up whatever. This we our want first. Right is now. this our first? Pod this is the first podcast. podcast. Oh yeah. We this is our make, first cast. We man. can make up words. Oh, we're gonna roll. We're gonna make people like lawyers again. Bring lawyers likable again. I don't know how we're gonna put that. Make lawyers likable again. That is. It's gonna be tough. It's a gonna be huge tough order. undertaking. No way. We're the second oldest profession, man. And we're pretty close <laughs> to the first one. You know what? The first one, I think, is thriving. Everybody works. It does seem to be making a pretty good <laughs> comeback. I don't think lawyers are going to make it, though. Hmm. You think Jack, chat GP tell him I know he's going to beat him? Just out? ask the people behind the camera. Yeah, they might know. You guys think the chat GP LMNOP is going to take over lawyers? I'm seeing hell no. Oh, they, they're shaking heads. <laughs> we got no, we got nods. Okay, all right, all right. We're, 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 we're divided back there. That's good. I don't think it's taking over anything. But I don't know. I've seen Terminator, and I'm kind of thinking, wow, that was prophetic. Who would have thought Arnold was way ahead of his time? <laughs> so AIs, you know what we may okay, we're digressing. All right, so it's important to know number one, two, and three. It's important to know your client, and 
and you had that difficult um, client that has these, I'm going to make a million dollars in the back of his mind, and I'm Mr. Victim, and I'm this, and I'm that, and yeah, that's going to come down the road. But um, there was a client that we had a while back that injury, that Hogel Injury Law was looking at, and this guy was like dang near homeless, uh, kind of suicidal, a little bit on the holy snap. This guy may end up going to both my house, the defense counsel's house, their offices, their children's offices, and their dogs aren't going to be safe and their gerbils and hamsters. I want that story. I want to hear that one because that one was, that one made my heart smile the way you just handled that that one's actually kind of painful to talk about uh <clears throat> this is uh just not very long ago no see and honestly i mean i don't know if this can go out but uh no, we're, we're not doing names okay but uh he was or names of the other attorney who you know he'll get the point though when he watches this <clears throat> um our client was uh a vet uh, very much suffered from PTSD um, <clears throat> and had some serious problems unrelated to the accident. Um, but he was involved in an accident and um, it was challenging. He had already threatened before we even took him on as a client to uh, um, take revenge on um, the insurance company that was denying his claim and uh, things were difficult um, because we were unable to obtain uh, a reasonable settlement offer um, we actually uh, um, <clears throat> were having some client control issues with him yeah um, but ultimately we're able to uh, get you Personally, I, I did. I hand, yeah. handled that one a little bit differently. And of course, uh, um, I, I wouldn't say that I handled him, but certainly tried to take very good care of him, a lot of time on the phone with him. And he felt hurt. Meeting in person, and, and, and rightfully so. I think, yeah. you know, it, it's, I, I don't want to get political, but uh, our, I think generally our vets have not been taken care of in the way that we should and have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. So when somebody else disses them, uh, maybe it brings it all back to some extent. But uh, he was certainly feeling that. Um, I was doing my best to try to take care of him and we ended up being able to get him uh, a good settlement. And uh, I uh, took him out to breakfast at I couldn't believe that part. Cross the street and uh, delivered his check to him, and uh, anyway, it was it was a good result. You him. just you went, picked up the homeless guy, took him to breakfast, gave him a settlement amount, made him feel not like a victim. I mean, this was a really good example for our entire staff here, yours specifically too. Um, it, the Hokel injury. I mean that that was like the unattainable win, like the turnaround of that individual and his soul being treated like a person was, I mean, everybody was taking note. That was really cool. And that just happened a minute ago. But that, my point is in that dirty part of the pool at the beginning, we were talking about where you came from. You don't get a, that opportunity to do that. Um, because nobody feels, um, that all state or state farm or whomever uh, whomever's your good neighbor whoever mayhem's representing nowadays um or the little lizard um nobody you're not getting any reason to be sympathetic or not sympathetic with anybody there mm -hmm. i mean you're just talking to an adjuster it's clinical it's pretty black white cut dry um but likewise you've got these you know, heavy hitters and these Eagle, I, I think the Eagle's got to change its name at some point. At some point, it's got to be a different bird. Bring it down to Tweety Bird, but I really like Tweety Birds. I don't want to diminish Tweety. You know what I'm saying? I just think that needs to be the new, you know, mascot there or cricket. Maybe 
So Philadelphia Tweety Birds? Yeah, the Tweety Birds. I don't know if Philadelphia is going to buy into that. I'm thinking more of the Warner Brother Tweety Bird, the one that Sylvester was always trying to get. How do we how do we go from legal to Tweety? I don't know. That just stay in, put. It happened in like an instant. Hey, you, okay. Anyway, sorry. Are you kidding me? You've been around. <laughs> we've been around each other for so long. You're you're wondering about how we got the Tweety. Okay. So you know what? I was just, I was going to say that. Thank heaven on that case. One, you had a, a very seasoned defense attorney uh, that yep. I could explain the challenges that I was dealing with on our side, and. I could work with him to put something together that made sense before uh, things really got out of hand, and so that worked. And he's not known to be soft-hearted. No, he's he's very talented, very gifted, and, and very good at what he does. He's in that dark side of the pool. Comes out from time to time, though. He's, Shows some cameos. But you know what? He's got a heart, and he's logical. And uh, I, I you were able to jump that come to barrier. come to very much respect him, and uh, we've done battle since then, and, and continue to have that respect for him. Yeah, it's got to feel, given your history and then now all of what you've gone through, um, and I'm not saying poor Mr. Ward. I mean he. You know, at all, it's been a very good, uh, very, very good uh, run for you, and you still have like love for the game, and that to me is that's cool. I mean, that's you know, we're becoming less spring chickadee. Yeah. No offense. I mean, you don't look it. I'm wearing it, but the, the gray. Oh, it's getting there. It's a getting there. It's coming. getting there. Yeah. I'm thinking about Richard Gear in it. Maybe just throwing a little yeah. in there. I'm old enough to have it. Yeah. Dag a mom. But anyway, let's You just on. had a birthday. Yeah. Shout her Ray. Hoorah. <laughs> we celebrate her for my birthday. It had nothing to do with it. Yeah. I, I think I was there. But next year's the big one, right? Half century? No, I got two. two. I got two. I got 48, 49. So I turned 48 a little bit ago, and I... I You're still spring. I still feel like I'm 18. I still think like I'm 18. Unfortunately, I still act like I'm 18. Ask my cute wife. She'll tell you that I'm That's good. It's good that it's not 12 anymore. But not everything works like it's 18. Uh, That's 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 a problem. Let's not segue into that. Let's not go there. (laughs) Because, you know, we'd have to start talking about statin medications (laughs) and things of that nature. We don't want to go there. So... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> These guys are already going to have enough editing to do. and I'm pretty research. sure that this is going up raw. Yeah. There, so, there might be a bloop reel or something that oh, there gets might, tagged on the The bloop end reel that, she's doing, but I think yeah. these guys are just throwing this on raw. Yeah. So what I like <laughs> is all this dirty pool that you were involved in brings all this this knowledge, and then you build with your team the importance of of that relationship that you were talking about. And then when you saw that there was nobody, like almost impossible, frankly, when I was looking at this case, um, the veteran case, the man that was, I mean, look kind of scary. Okay, a little bit more than that. And the way you kind of just walked over the DMZ, I mean, you just boom. And just you filled that, and I mean, it was immediate. Um, it showed everybody that everybody mattered, and that is our culture here. But I mean, that example was a good reminder. That particular, wow, no man left behind. I mean, our clients, we know who they are, what their name is. You know that those are your clients, and you know their names. You know their their birthdays, you know, what they're struggling with as far as, I mean, they, they don't have enough um, ability physically to go pick up their child from school or to go to work and feed their, their, their family or, or participate in, in, in the family affairs and things of that nature. And, and so those are the things that we know that your injury firm the Hogle injury firm is always focused on, and that's what puts, let's say that somebody with a sweet flavor saver might resolve a case for $500. 
But we're looking at that case. You, you, this is coming from your words, and I just kind of wanted to make sure I got it right. Yeah, they might resolve it for 500 bucks, but that's a $1,200 claim all day long. And we're not going to not get that. And your Navy SEAL squad, the, your team around you, thinks the same way. I mean, they might be more greedy even than our clients, <laughs> it seems. It's not greed. I'm, not, I'm just saying that they're... <laughs> okay, fair enough. I'll explain you know that, what? though. That is, that's the way I used to think about it I like when I that. was working defense side. It's not greed. It's, it's just, first of all, we don't know because we're not feeling it. Ah. I mean, now because I'm not a spring chicken, um, because my back hurts all the time, because my neck, you know, I can pop it and crack it and things like that. And I haven't been involved in anywhere near the type of accidents that our clients have. So... I can guess what their bodies are feeling like, what they're having to deal with, especially, you know, someone who's trying to go to work because they just can't miss, or they're trying to do this with three kids and, you know, their back hurts so bad they can't even get out of bed in the morning. Um, so, okay, yeah, they want a lot of money. That's not greed, that's just, hey, I, I want to be fairly compensated. Most of my clients would say, you know what, if, if that's the amount that I can get, unfortunately, our legal system can only compensate with money. But most of them would say, I would just rather go back and have the accident be undone. Yeah. Because this is not worth a million dollars to me. I, I know I can't get that much, but it's just not worth it. If I could undo the accident, that would be my first choice. Mm. So, um, but you sounded like total defense counsel. I liked it. I liked that you called me on it. Yeah, yeah. All right, I, I wasn't know, setting you up either. That's the funny thing. You've you've <clears throat> you've completely edited my my verbiage. You've completely changed my tone as far as you're right. That's not. That's reasonable. That's reasonable. So they're shooting for reasonable, and you've got this this Navy SEAL squad that looks at it like, no. I mean, are you kidding me? You remember that part of this where this happened? And you remember that part of this where this happened and when they were waiting for blah, 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 and, this, and all of this happened? Like they know little by little by little exactly what these folks have endured. And I don't think they're getting that anywhere else. And I just think that that's pretty cool that you provide that. And so Hogle Injury has that Navy SEALs that just kind of attack and it's really about getting to know the person. And what I liked was the last person I talked to that you and Jeff had already hung out with, you and the beard, we call them, had already hung out with. I got They, they came to me to, to rave about you guys, you and your team. And I thought, that's pretty cool, that, number one. But then I, no, that wasn't good enough. They wanted to let me know that they had worked in the industry, or the, the wife had worked in the industry her whole entire life, they were retired, that their chicken salad had turned to chicken poop. There's another way to say that, but I don't want you to, you know. More editing. Yeah, more editing or anything. So, and that they felt heard all the way through part of the movement of their own claim, and that it gave them it gave them some peace of mind throughout the whole entire thing. It wasn't necessarily um, that they felt like they resolved their cases wonderfully. They did feel that way. It was they had not forgotten how well, how good they felt being part of the team process. And they wanted me to know that. And they wanted to say all sorts of things about you. And they wanted posters of you and pictures. And you had to provide that to me. They wanted the beard, too, though, so don't get too cocky. Yeah. You um, know, but, I, but I thought that was super cool yeah. that, that they insisted because you and your, your Navy SEALs, you and Hogle Injury decided to, to reduce um, your bill on that case. And they kind of demanded you not, which, like, no, take a full fee. 
We won that argument too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. who does that? Who gets to feel that way when they go home at the end of, you know, a, a hard day's work? Because we are dealing with sometimes that veteran. Yeah. You know, it was a little bit of a, as we were having a, one of our firm wide gatherings. So we've got not just personal injury, but uh, family law and criminal law all there. And I'm just looking around at all these great people and thinking, if I'm a client and I walk in and I've got, and, and sometimes these people have, they've been in a personal injury accident, maybe they're dealing with a criminal matter and, and their marriage is also in jeopardy. So they might actually need all of our services all at the same time. But if I got to choose if I had to choose one where, you know, it, it was just really difficult. I mean, do I want an injury that I'm suffering with? Would I prefer to have been you know, charged with a crime and now maybe my liberty's in jeopardy? Or would I want my family to possibly be, be, fractured. be coming to an end? And yeah. it's just like, and, and I thought about my vet and how difficult it was for him and how frustrated he was that he couldn't get what he knew was a fair amount due to him for his injury and thought every single client whether it's personal injury crim or family law has got something really big something really hard that they're going to otherwise they wouldn't be seeking us out and they have a right to be frustrated. They have a right to be not at their very best. Yeah. Um, and, and again, most of our clients are, are very respectful and civil in spite of the pains and challenges that they're having. But they, we shouldn't expect that all the time because they're going through a really, really hard time. And that's yeah. what brings them to us to, to seek our expertise uh, to help walk them through it. And, and that's what we do. And I, you know, in, I, I think for me personally, um, so much of this is that as defense counsel, it was very much about efficiency. I've also done civil litigation where it was just, hey, it's, you know, 300, $350 an hour. And you get on the phone with someone, and while you, you know, hey, how are you? How's the kids? Um, they know, uh, uh, okay, uh, you know, really, really don't want to chit chat. I know you're going to send me a bill for this phone call, so let's get to the point. And now, as a personal injury plaintiff's attorney, I can take the time to get to know the individuals and it not only enhances the relationship between me and the client it certainly does that but it also allows me to do my job better because now i know what's going on with them and i can say hey adjuster hey defense counsel did you know that that jimmy's still having this problem and he's still suffering with this as a, from from this accident and he needs to be compensated for yeah. that. And it is a win-win for me to be able to get in and, and understand and build a relationship with, with the people that we represent. Well, it's, it's a win for Hogel Injury Law too. I mean, the, the, when I saw what happened with that veteran, when I saw that, no one told you to do a thing. In fact, the discussion was, how do we get rid of this case without po potential having to call the police and all that jazz? That was the discussion being had. No one does what you did, but you did it. And like, when you have the two incredibly um, positive, wonderful, of good report 
Navy SEALs, no, they're Navy SEALs. They're, they're, they're grumpy, they're persnickety, but they're great with the people. But when you have them just watching every step you made in that, I, would, I was like, wow. I mean, I was blown away watching that because I didn't have a thing to do with any of it, only just watching. And, and so you and I have known each other for many years. I mean, we go back 12, 15 years at least when you were writing all my heavy stuff. And I did pretty good with your writing. But man, I mean, when I, he, you were undefeated, the, right? Yes, we are undefeated. But you were the cleaner, though. If I had, boy, if I had something that was way above all, everybody else's pay grade, Mike. And so to take and to have that and to have that be here and that gear is there. And you always seem to want to look for a reason to use the gear because you just, why is that? Why, tell me about that. I mean, dude, is it just, I mean, you don't really use the gear if it's not necessary. I'm not saying that. It's just that you want to almost have a competition with somebody else that thinks that they can write or they can research or they could do this or they could do that. It's like you want, mm, ooh, let's do that just for fun. Like it'd be a board game for you. You know, there are probably some fights that would be, probably best to just be left alone and not be picked. Um, but because I can research and write and the, the fight is, in, at least to me, worth fighting, okay, let's go fight. Um, but to me, that's the untold part of this story. Just. That's untold because that's what made that esteemed opposing counsel that you called. He knows that about you. He knows that there's weaponry and there's truth in your words. There's iron in your words, like in the outlaw Josie Wales. We have a client. You know this, but I'll just say it. <clears throat> and, and we've actually just, hey, can we just get rid of that? Um, we have clients that um, were represented by another firm. Mm -hmm. And uh, one, of these, one of these, one of the other, uh, you know, TV advertising firms, um, they were not well taken care of. They switched over to us. Um, that attorney put a, a former attorney put a lien on the phone. Oh yeah, and uh, bird. and the client said, please make sure that they don't get paid anything. They were terrible. They were terrible. We're thinking about suing them. Please don't give them a dime. Well, we, we were able to achieve a good settlement. And now what do we do? If, if we fight and, and honor the client's wishes, um, we're going to end up in a fight with this other firm, and they're bigger than we are. And, um, and it's really not a large amount of money. It's a few thousand dollars. But uh, anyway, we've been fighting with this with this other firm for quite a while. And it's really kind of fun, for me at least, to see the level of expertise or lack thereof yeah. when it really comes down to it. Right. And so for me, it's a little bit of a learning process. And um, I know that you've talked to me and just, why don't we just pay the money? It's just, I, I'm, I'm, they're, they're educating me Oh yeah, you can't. You can't, you can't. Yeah. Anyway, the, they're educating. We me. have discussed it. I thought I don't know why you keep wanting to fight this fight, but you're you're beating them at every turn. It's kind of funny. I, you know what? Just again, it seems like you're having fun with it. Is I get to honor the client's wishes. That's true. I get to. I'm not going to say humiliate. No, because we never want to humiliate no. anyone. But but uh, if you're going to use the gear, you're using it for righteousness. Yeah, I feel really good about it. I, I don't blame you on that one at we, all. We better not put this out there because this is an active litigation matter. We haven't said one name. We haven't said one <laughs> logo. Haven't, we haven't said we the haven't, eagle. No, I don't think we said eagles. <laughs> See, the eagle? Bald eagle. Yeah, the, the eagle. We said Tweety. Yeah. I did really hard work to get to Tweety. Yeah. But 
I mean, I, it's actually kind of fun about, that ahead. just now, see, every now and then I do get to be defense counsel still right. and sharpen the saw a little bit because Goldberg and Osborne versus Hogel and Ward, it's just kind of a beautiful thing. It is kind of fun. I love it, yeah. mainly because you love it. <laughs> so, and I get to watch a master work again. Um, Gosh, I mean, it's just so interesting that that um, most people, if you talk to them um, out there in the stratosphere, um, are going to probably ha disfavor or have a, a negative uh, connotation with the lawyers. And I do. Right. I do. I I, the only people I feel should are well, lawyers. I, I feel like lawyers are allowed to hate lawyers because... I, I can't stand most lawyers. Right. We are dealing with them all day long, and we're like, ah, but they're probably good neighbors. Yeah. They're, you know, probably, you know, decent uh, fans of their team that they enjoyed, it, whatever, blah, 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 blah. So I don't know, I mean, outside of that, but I mean, I get how we would disdain attorneys. Um, Remember the uh, New York lawyer? I oh, probably can't talk about that one either, but uh, it's a really obnoxious twit, and I told him, hey, don't even bother. Um, Did he call me an obnoxious twit or you? No, I, <clears throat> I called him an obnoxious twit. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, it was, it was fun beating him recently. Yeah, well, uh, I, again, that's another pending. That's matter. another pending. Not he, again. Not against. Not against anything. We're not saying anything. That one can make it because <laughs> being called an obnoxious <laughs> twit is always fun. Um, you probably but, probably can't include either one of those last two. Oh no, you're you're including that one. The boys are going to include almost everything. Did you not see my last I, response I'm saying, video? Do you really do you really want? Come on, man. I love it, Pete. Take the names out and get all the more fired up. And the up. bird. He's, he's going to get all the more fired up. I'm trying not to. Oh, like you can fire him up anymore. Like any at all. I mean, we could send him a bag of turds every day. It's not going to. He'll probably eat it. I just his last name says I, it all. I'm happy to gloat, but I'm afraid that that my. Okay, you might want to cut that little piece off, but keep the twit. I'm, I'm happy to gloat, but I'm afraid that my gloating might cause some s more suffering for you. I don't think so. Uh, it's only uh, the case is what it is. Okay. I'm going pro per on this one. It'll be fun. I have some good backing. I, you know, I can talk to you about things. That's the good news. You need counsel for the firm. Of course. Anyway, we could talk about that more later. Why wouldn't we? So anyway, it's good times as far as when, when you like what you do and it almost feels like we're almost to the level with injury law, Hogel injury law is almost to the level of, of Baskin Robbins. Like we work at an ice cream shop to where, how cool would that be to just hand out ice cream all day long? It almost feels like, I mean, we had to earn scooping that ice cream. Can you see my, my I look, see your face. Can you, where where do you like? What ice cream shop do you go to? Who likes Baskin Robbins anymore? I'm old school. I like 31 flavors. And my mom. I, I'm just Okay, where would you like? I, 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 mean, I mean, there's some really good... What, what, where? Yeah, really good stuff out there. I mean, if we're going to get into an argument over whatever, we, do you not get my point? Yeah, I get your point. But, but I mean, yeah, being able to, to you know, full serve something good. Yeah, all I, right. I, we'll I go get that way. Right. I get the point. All right. But, but Baskin Robbins? All right, whatever. You, you know what? I still like KFC. Which, okay, we're we're going to have a problem with this me, one. Yeah, right? Which yeah. puts me like... I, I don't know. That's that's a low class. Yeah, you might have to take that out. That ruins everything. <laughs> Here we are. Okay. All I know is it goes Popeyes way up here. No. Oh, way no. Uh, up in here. No. There's a reason why you're on the low end on the food chicken on the chicken <laughs> side here. 
Popeyes. Absolutely. Stop. Oh, oh, bring oh, it I, down. And then maybe churches is right. No, right you. no. Yes. Oh, you know what? If you're if you're looking to get a big box of grease. Yeah. yeah. Isn't just, that what fried just, chicken just is? All right, here we go. Scoop out the grease trap and All right. slap it on your right. tray. First off, the message we want <laughs> for the listeners of the pod, for those that are chatting back there, we're going to cut that out. But the listeners of the pod, we want them to, A, think about who they hire to where they hire really good and attentive people that are going to get them the best result, period, end of story. That's... That's what Hogel Injury Law does, and that's what the staff does. And we need and want everybody out there to know that message. Okay, there's that. I also want them to know that you have bad taste in fried chicken. And I need, we need to have a poll conducted now. As many people that want to post on whatever this thing goes and tell us, what their choice of fried chicken would be. And when I bury you, you're gonna owe me Popeyes. Let's have an argument. Okay. Let, let's have moot court. Moot court, moot okay. court. You're going to try as best you can mm -hmm. to advance the merits of Popeyes and Church's fried chicken. Okay. And I get both of them? Dude, you can have whatever you want. Okay. Well, are, are we getting the cut? Thank you so much. No, you guys keep going. I like where you're going, Chris. <laughs> okay. The restaurateur. Okay. okay. Moot court. You can have Popeyes and churches. But we're, they're going to be our jury. Yes. Whoever's listening to this is going to be our jury. Yes. And they're going to agree with me. Are you ready for that? No. The colonel has lost his touch. The colonel has been not good since it opened, just so everyone knows. You know, I, we're talking about fried chicken places, yeah. which have really taken a beating generally because it's just greasy chicken, right? You can't just diminish chicken that's greasy like that. A greasy chicken is good. But I'm just saying KFC is going to dominate over Popeyes and churches. Okay. How many new KFCs have you seen as opposed to how many new Popeyes have you seen recently? I don't know. All I know Last is year the KFC to... closest to my house disappeared. <laughs> and, it, and it's now probably a church's yeah. or a Filiberto's. My whole family dressed up in black, went over in a wake. <laughs> the people at the new bank. Have you not was... had the red beans and rice? I win right there at, at red... the Popeyes. See, the fact that you immediately turn to the side dish oh, and, no. and get away from the, the spicy chicken. spicy chicken, is dark it? meat. No, 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 no. That was, that was an admission of guilt. Oh my gosh, was an no admission way. of guilt. What hey, about the their best sandwich? Thing is red beans. What about their chicken yeah, please, sandwich? Please forget about our Try chicken because it's terrible. <laughs> You're going there today. No. Yes. Never. never. Uh, yeah, I'm never. telling you right now. I'm gonna. Re you have not ordered right. You need to get the spicy no. dark chicken with the red beans and rice. Ooh, you you know. How like, am I thin? It's like. I'm just saying. You're down in Tucson, right? You're at your kids meat or whatever it is and it's kind of like dang it's time to eat i wonder if there's any good places to eat around here and it's just like you look around there's the yanterias and you know yeah. things like that and there's not a whole lot of places to eat so you drive a few miles and you come you across, didn't go to the taller you come across <laughs> church's chicken and now it's just like it's man, on man it's on are you kidding you're looking around desperately hoping that Maybe there's Look. a dirty taco stand or something like that. I don't know, but you, you almost did bring up something that you speak your Spanish, soul. which is kind of nice. And you go to Church's Chicken, and, you, and then you are reminded why you don't go to why KFC. Why you never go to Church's Chicken? Okay, obviously you have not been to Church's in some amount of time. Why would I? Why, okay. why would anyone? Because Church's has upped their game to compete with Popeyes because they rock and they've upped their game. So it's really close. As far as the chicken itself goes, for me, it's like, oh boy, that'd be tough because I only do dark meat. I like myself some dark meat. Mm -hmm. Greasy dark meat. 
I have not been to churches in a long time. I also haven't been to receive a colonoscopy in a long time because it's a similar experience. I only go if I absolutely have to. Well, apparently I have to get a colonoscopy within the next couple of years at some point. However, I'm going to eat churches to celebrate it afterward. I have a hard time because they don't have the red beans and rice. I love the red beans and rice combo with my dark fried chicken that's greasy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And the folks out there that are hearing us right now aren't only going to know how great the injury law firm is. They're going to know how great churches probably they're not going to be quite on my side on that one but they're going to definitely take the you know Popeyes what? train doo, doo. It, I, they're gonna if anybody watches this if we have if we have anybody that likes us still after they've watched this just please weigh in tell them the kfc is better and let's just put this to rest we don't even need to have a trial okay fine we, we can have one we can put let, it on the let, calendar let them just go ahead and say which one they like better number one and then i want kind of some of their experiences also, because we can learn from a consumer. So somebody that's been in a car accident, somebody that's been through that arena, somebody that maybe represented themselves, somebody that went with one of the big firms thinking that they were being well taken care of or whatever the case may be. And every time they call in, they're like, what's your name again? And you can hear them typing away, typing away, typing away, looking for where you're at in your system. Instead of you know hitting the beard or Cynthia, oh hey, how you doing, Nancy? Things are going, things going okay. How's that dog? I remember he had a problem there, and you had to take him to the vet. Blah 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 blah. I mean that's like every day here. Mm-hmm. Like we know these people, we know their names, and and then that's the coolest part of it about that. But I want to hear what other folks have to say about their experiences um, with other law firms. Um, because we both know the insurance companies are like KFC and they're all about saving money, putting out some cheap, 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 little as possible output for the most amount input. That is insurance. That is you're in good hands. That is mayhem. That is ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. That is the, the KFCs of the world. Okay, but now I'm going to leave it. At right, that right there because that was a really good closing yeah and we're gonna go ahead and close it right there you're just sneaking out of I'm just sneaking me the last right out no. just like go ahead you're gonna you take that to. last jab yes yeah. that was a good jab though you have to admit that was a good turn <laughs>